countless tales, myths, and legends of the peoples of the world speak of underground cities and civilizations, as well as a vast network of connected tunnels all over the planet. If you ask any scientist about the construction of the Earth, he would answer you, inner core, outer core, mantle, upper mantle, crust. If you are interested in this topic, you can watch the video Amazing Things About the Earth That You Didn't Know. Many lovers of the paranormal, the unexplained, the esoteric, and the like will disagree with this and will introduce you to the theory that the Earth is hollow and strange creatures thrive in it, in underground cities. It is their point of view that we are about to examine in this video. Who are these strange creatures? How do they come to live inside the Earth? And where are the entrances to their underground cities? Stay with us until the end to find out the answers to these questions. The theory is based on the ancient legends of many cultures, which claim that there are races of people and entire civilizations that thrive in underground cities. Very often, these inhabitants of the world beneath our feet are considered technologically more advanced than us. Others believe that aliens are not from other planets, but were created by strange beings on Earth. But let's go back in time and look for traces of the existence of all this. Since ancient times, many peoples and different cultures have been convinced that there is another invisible world below us. In the myths, legends, and folklore of various tribes and civilizations, there are accounts of such a world, of an underground kingdom, or a place from which they originated. Examples of this are the underworld of Hades in ancient Greek mythology, the Scandinavian Svartalheim, the Christian Hell, the Jewish Sheol, and many more. Kabbalistic and Tibetan literature also mentions a similar dark place. The Tibetans tell a story that has been handed down from generation to generation, according to which there is an ancient city, Shambhala, which is located inside the earth. Indian legends tell that there is a world under the earth, and they are the first to come out of it, and their mission is to populate the surface. Eskimos also have a similar belief, coming from their folklore. According to the legends of many of the cultures listed above and thousands more unmentioned, there are entrances to the world beneath our feet that are scattered all over its surface, including around the two poles. Officially, the history of the hollow earth theory began in the 17th century, when the famous English astronomer and mathematician Sir Edmund Halley first proposed this scientific hypothesis. After a series of observations of the earth's magnetic field, Halley came to the conclusion that the observed anomalies can only be explained by the fact that the Earth consists of two spheres, an outer solid and an inner hollow, each of which has its own magnetic axis. At that time, however, this theory was refuted by other scientists and by the non-believing society. Two centuries later, the theory of the hollow Earth is gaining popularity again. Although during these two centuries, there were persons periodically raising their voices in support of the theory. In the 19th century, famous scientists such as John Cleves Sims Jr. and Jeremiah N. Reynolds took up the subject again and insisted that our planet was completely empty inside. Sims not only claimed that the Earth was hollow, but that it consisted of different levels within its interior. Jules Verne's novel, Journey to the Center of the Earth from 1864 also played a big role in popularizing this theory. In the 20th century, Hitler and Nazi Germany took great interest in the hollow earth theory. They took it so seriously that they organized as many as three missions to Antarctica. According to conspiracy beliefs, the emissaries of the Third Reich found what they came for. What's more, according to them, Hitler's mysterious disappearance after the end of the war happened precisely there he was admitted to the other world, located under our feet. Now let's get back to our time. Two of the scientists' main proofs of their rightness are volcanic eruptions and gravity. However, they do not seem convincing at all according to the supporters of the theory of the hollow Earth. In June 2014, scientists studied the Earth's mantle, but they don't go far. We have barely scratched the surface of the Earth, we drilled until 13 kilometers inland, 
but had to stop because it got too hot. It is about 6,500 kilometers to the center of the Earth. We only reached 13. This is nothing, says John Brandenburg, one of the researchers in the mission. This gives hollow Earth proponents even more reason to say that ultimately no one can know and say for sure what's inside, and they refuse to accept the view that the scientific community is expressing. According to them, there is a whole other world inside the Earth, as were the beliefs of the ancient people. One of the most common names given to a society of underground dwellers is Agartha. After a little research, we found this information in The Smoky God, the biography of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Johnson. Featured in Agartha, Secrets of the Underground Cities, the story written by Willis Emerson explains how Jensen's ship sailed through Earth's entrance to the surface of the North Pole. For two years, Jensen lived with the inhabitants of the Agartha colonies, which Emerson wrote were about 3.60 meters high and whose world was lit by a smoky central sun. It is very possible that these are the so-called giants that have been spotted on our lands thousands of years ago. You can watch a detailed video about the giants on our channel. According to the secrets, the inhabitants of Agartha were driven underground by the many upheavals and wars that occurred on the surface of the Earth. This happened as a result of the long Atlantean Lemurian War and the use of thermonuclear weapons, which ultimately led to the extinction of these two highly developed civilizations. The Sahara, the Gobi, the Australian Outback, and the U.S. deserts are just a few examples of the extent of the devastation. Some cities were created as refuges for the people and as safe repositories for the sacred records, teachings, and technologies that these ancient cultures benefited from. There are known to be several entrances to the realm of Agartha around the world. Mammoth Cave in South Central Kentucky, USA. Mount Shasta, California, USA. The city of Ajarte Telos is believed to lie beneath this mountain. Manaus, Brazil. Mato Grosso, Brazil, posed cities believed to be located below this plain. Igauzu Falls, on the border between Brazil and Argentina. Mount Epomeo, Italy. Himalayan Mountains, Tibet. The entrance to the underground city of Shanxi is guarded by Hindu monks. Mongolia, the underground city of Xinhua, is located under the border between Mongolia and China. Rama, India. Some claim that beneath the surface of this city is the long-lost underground city of Rama, the pyramids of Giza, Egypt, King Solomon's Mines, North and South Pole. Unlike Christians, Buddhists in Central Asia believe that there is a wonderful land beneath the earth, Agartha and or Agartha. The people there are beautiful and much wiser than us. There reigns a king who can read human souls. For millennia, Tibetan scholars have spoken of an underworld, saying that they are in contact with the king of the underworld, who is also the supreme ruler of the entire planet. They speak and write of a tunnel connecting Tibet to the inner world, and note that there are many other entrances scattered throughout the earth. The capital of this inner world, and therefore the whole world, as they say, is Shambhala, where the ruler of the world is surrounded by superior beings who teach the representatives of humanity science, art, religion, and philosophy. In India, there is an ancient belief about an underground race of snake people who live in the cities of Patala and Bogati. According to legend, they waged war against the kingdom of Agartha. The Nagas, according to William Michael Mott's Assassins of the Deep, are a highly advanced race or species with highly developed technology. They also despise human beings, whom they are said to abduct, torture, and even eat. This is very reminiscent of the claims of an alien reptoid race, both in appearance and behavior. More details on the reptoids can be found in our video on alien races and humans. While the entrance to Bhagavati is somewhere in the Himalayas, believers claim that Patala can be entered through Sheshna's well in Benares, India. Mott writes that this entrance has 40 steps descending at the round end of a shaft at a close stone door surmounted by a bas relief depicting a cobra. There is also a great mystic temple in Tibet called Patala, 
which is said by the people to have an ancient cave at the top and a tunnel system that reaches across the Asian continent and beyond. The Nagas also have an affinity for water, and the entrances to their subterranean palaces are often thought to be hidden at the bottom of wells, deep lakes, and rivers. The Old Ones, in an Atlantis Rising article titled The Hollow Earth, Myth or Reality, Brad Steiger writes about the legends of the Old Ones, an ancient race that inhabited the upper world millions of years ago and then moved underground. The Old Ones, an extremely intelligent and a scientifically developed race, Steiger writes, have chosen to restructure their own environment below the surface of the planet and produce everything for their needs. The Old Ones are humanoids with lifespans much longer than humans. They often kidnap the human children of teachers and raise them as their own. One of the most controversial theories about Earth's inner inhabitants is the Shaver Mysteries. In 1945, Amazing Stories magazine published a story told by Richard Shaver, who claimed to have recently been a guest of what was left of an underground civilization. Although there were people who truly believed this story, many others suspected that Shaver was actually mentally ill. However, Richard, for his part, insists that his story is true. He claims that the old race, or Titans, came to this planet from another solar system in the prehistoric past. After a while, living on the surface, they realized that the sun was causing them to dry out prematurely. So they fled underground, building huge underground complexes in which to live. Eventually, they decided to seek a new home on a new planet due to the damaging radiation from the sun, leaving Earth. They leave behind underground cities inhabited by a minority of noble and human Theros, while most have degenerated over time into a mentally disabled and sadistic population known as Deros, short for harmful robots. Robots, Shaver clarifies, are not mechanical machines, but are compared to robots because of their emotionless behavior. It is these creatures that Shaver claims to have encountered. Despite the immense popularity of the Shaver mysteries, the location of the entrance to this underworld is never revealed. Over queerly? Absolutely. But it is said that under the earth there is an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, an upper mantle, and a crust, without anyone having been there and seen them. Why then reject any other version of what lies beneath our feet? If we have to refer to facts as much as there is scientific evidence for one version, we can say that there is just as much for the other. After all, the truth is out there, and we would add that we will hardly ever know it all.